right. We are here. Guess what? I know we're off season right now, but it felt very important um, to talk about this new movie and not because I hinted at the podcast why I shaved my beard in the middle of an episode last season uh, and everyone kind of guessed it because I was in Savannah at the time. Um, but now we're here today with a special episode uh, of the Seemingly Unknown podcast, which we haven't done yet. I think we need to do more of because we're, we are such movie nerds. Um, and we're going to do like a Halloween ends or yeah, Halloween ends roundtable today. And we have some special guests. We didn't come alone. Ladies and gentlemen, our friend Ben from Fright Rags is here. Shout out Thanks to Ben and our friend Jimmy yes. Champagne who's one of my favorite uh, horror movie YouTubers. And like I, I watch all of his Halloween stuff and I've actually watched some of the other stuff too, even though if you know me, like everyone, all of our fans think I'm this big horror movie guy and I'm really not. I just like Halloween. Like that's really it. <laughs> you, just don't watch enough, you don't watch enough good ones. That's your problem. Right. <sighs> you know, I liked it when I was a kid. Like I loved all the Freddy stuff as a kid. I was never a huge Jason guy, but. You know, it's my dude. Yeah, you're you're a big Jason guy. That's, yeah, I love that. Anyway, so we're here and we're going to talk about it. Um, I, the amount of texts that I've been getting, and not because I'm in the movie, just because people know how nerdy I am about it and just want to talk to me about it. Like last night, and I don't know, I I sent her the link. She may jump in here. I had like a two and a half hour conversation with Carrie Underwood last night about this movie because every time a movie comes yeah. out, she'll text me, and she texted me when she saw me in it. She goes, I see you in the diner. And I'm like, text me when you're done. <laughs> and so she texted me. She texted me when the movie was over. And I was like, all right, let's get into this. And we had like, we all had our things that we were talking about. She had a, a couple things and I had a couple of things that we were going back and forth. So I want to, uh, I'm interested, John, because normally we go see these together. Yes. They're usually on tour when they come out. Um, Obviously we're going to like get super into this. And I'm, I'm very interested to see what, what Ben and Jimmy have to say, just because I I've watched Jimmy's spoiler review, which I agree, you know, I had already kind of written all that most of that stuff down. There's a lot of stuff I didn't write down that he said in it, but um, give me your overall. I me? was, or, I, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, uh, okay. John, yeah, sorry. I, was I was like, pissed. I'm not ready. <laughs> I was pissed. You were not the gay son of the two guys who were killed in the previous movie. <laughs> that was the joke that we had going like that. We were going to, I was going to be big John and little John's kid. Yeah, <laughs> that was the joke. I like that. That, that would have been I, uh, that would have been good. Baby, I, uh, Baby I, John, it's so weird. Cause, so I saw it in the theater on Thursday night, like one of those early previews, and I, I was kind of like, oh man, this is. I liked it, and so people that know me that know where we have had these talks. I love Season of the Witch, and so I love that it's different. It's weird. It's part of the the franchise per se, but it doesn't really talk about Michael Myers. And after I left this movie, I was like, man, this is going to be like my version of like season of the witch where it's to piss a lot of people off. And then down the line, hopefully it gets the respect it deserves, which oddly enough, Chris Nelson came out to the last shinedown show in Anaheim. And we were talking about that. We both talked about why we love season of the witch. So it was already in my head, like, you know what, maybe, maybe I'm going to feel the same way. So I watch the movie and I get home and I immediately watch it on Peacock. Um, and then I'm kind of like, dude, I got to start texting people because the people I want to text for now are going to be super pissed at this movie or they're going to love it like me. Like there's no in between. And I think today when I watch it again, um, I was basically, I like the movie because I'm not a super fan of the franchise, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not. You're a fan of masks. Michael Myers and Halloween, but you're not like, you don't follow the franchise. I'm. Correct. But I'm also a fan. This movie has some incredible shots. There's two or three like pitch angle shots that are amazing. The music's always great. Some of the kills, uh, that tongue scene, the DJ booth, I thought was super ingenious with it slapping around. Uh, when they killed all the, the bullies, I thought it was some great head stomps there. And so for me, I'm just like, man, this is a really cool, different type of movie where it's just, my biggest gripe, I guess, would be that there wasn't. A, I felt the the battle at the end between Lori and Michael. There, it seemed like the the payoff wasn't worth it. And I, I can see why people fans of the franchise would be pissed off because it's like you waited how many years for this actual final battle, and he's pinned against the thing with a refrigerator. Like, come on. So, I. Uh, but you know what, man? That first scene, that first ten minutes of that movie, where they like. I, that kid falling down the banister or whatever, like just God damn. Oh. And then the love angle in there, it was kind of weird. Like uh, was she just really tormented that sheer lust and sex drive was just 
it just seemed really <laughs> expedited. And then the other yeah. thing too is like sorry to go off on a tangent here. Michael went yeah. from Halloween Kills not only getting his ass kicked, but then killing everyone. It's all good. To we're, we're, we're all living in a tunnel, a storm drain for four years. Right, like he aged those four years, yeah. he aged almost too quickly, if that makes sense. Like, what was he doing the whole time? And why did he ever take a shower or change his clothes? <laughs> like that, that's my gripe. Like it just didn't make sense. Oh, we'll get into gripes. I have a lot of what's I have he a lot eating of down there. But there's the thing, like oh, they say they say he's eating homeless people. There's like a line where he's been dragging homeless people in there. Yeah, them. that's that was kind of the that, thing. That Somebody texted me about that it. today. The crazy like, guy says Fuck. it. You got to listen to him. He's like, everyone who goes in there doesn't come out. So why yeah. does he when he stabs that what that one bully you're having uh, late night scrambled eggs with the diner? Why did it you when he stabbed that guy? The the kids holding him and he kills him. He, when he kind of props up, which I thought was awesome, how we kind of like. He felt like he was getting like his lust back to we call kill that him. the jizz. So scene, if he, yeah. Right. So when he came, did you like why if he's been killing people the whole time, did he react? Why did he react like that the other times? Or is this the first time we see him kind of get that bloodlust back? Because if he was killing people this whole time, why would he react that way to this one random guy? It's because you haven't seen it. I guess you haven't seen where he's been, but also there's that missing poster. I want to go. I, I do want to get into all that stuff. Ben, give me your just give me like your general overview. My overview when it was over, I thought, okay, I liked it. I knew it was going to be different. And I thought this is a really good movie, but it felt like two movies to me. It felt like uh, an interesting yeah. story that was almost like Haddonfield Nights, you know, like some TV show yeah, episode. Yeah. That character driven. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. It was just, it was character driven and it, it was almost like a Freddy's Nightmares where Freddy's going to be there, but it's really about the story. And then you had what I think most people wanted was that that Michael versus Lori and battle, which was pretty much all given, not given away, but it was all in the trailer. And that's what people came for. And I think most fans came for. So I thought it was a tale of two movies in a way, even though I understand why they did what they did and, and, you know, all that, and we can talk about it, but I, I did like it. And I love, I just love people with vision and whether you like their vision or not, I like when people put on screen what they're seeing and they want to portray as opposed to just being some, cash grab slasher you know so yeah personally i enjoyed it but i knew it was going to take a few more viewings to really like digest it that was me too jimmy where are you at? i i, I kind of know where you are because I've, I've watched the video <laughs> but for the people who yeah. don't watch our videos uh yeah like thoughts haven't really evolved too much from the spoiler video i really liked it the first time i was just kind of like all over the place with it and then once i saw it a couple more times i like really started to love it I definitely agree with Ben that it feels like two movies kind of put together. And I think what would really fix that would be more Michael, like just some scene towards the beginning showing like what he's been doing, like kind of explaining a little bit more, not completely, but a little more and maybe one more kill just because uh, the one that we get the big prominent kill by actual Michael Myers is a recreation. And I was like, I felt a little cheap to me to not have anything else, but uh yeah i still i really like this movie it it's hard to look at this as a trilogy because it includes the first one and i kind of see like i still see 2018 as the actual like ending and then kills just feels like an extended ending for uh 2018 and then this one just feels like an epilogue kind of where you know michael's been beaten he's still around but he's just like needs to be finished off and i like the new story that was kind of included here it's it's definitely a weird way to look at the franchise right where you've got four movies but technically this is a trilogy it's interesting but this one i was more critical on kills when it came out just because i feel like i liked a lot of what it was doing but a lot of the technicals to me like between the kill scenes were really messy and i feel like it needed another editing pass so this one i didn't i i think that the technicals really made up for some of the weirder moments that this one has so that's kind of where i'm at yeah i i'm with you like i to, to kind of touch back on what you started with, like I wish there was some sort of scene that ended that basically it's somewhere in the beginning of the movie that started kind of where the, that night in 18 ended to kind of shows him kind of going away into the sewer or how he got there. You know, like I definitely wish there were, you know, my thing, a lot of people's gripes to me are, there's not enough Myers. There's not enough Myers. And I'm like, okay, well, have you seen the original Halloween? Cause there's not a lot of Michael Myers. Yeah, he's in barely in it. He's barely mm -hmm. in the movie. And that's what, you know, obviously that's everyone's Mount Rushmore of Halloween. Right. 
is, is that movie, including myself. Um, you know, I will say, I, I wish I would have saw that. Um, I'm with you. I does. I, I never, I think that's maybe the words that I was missing is it does feel like two movies to me. It does feel like two very different things that happened. Um, I like character driven stuff. I, I'll say this when I was on the set and I may, you know, I'm friends with most of the people on that set. I was on the set of the last one as well. Um, I made it a point to them to like, you know, cause they're, they're small talking. They've been on this set for, you know, at this point they had been in there for a couple of weeks. I made it a point to all of them to be like, whatever you're going to talk about, about the, anything that I'm not in, don't tell me, <laughs> but, I, but you know, I'm in the, I'm, I hu- mostly hung out in Nelson's trailer. The most that I know I, they, there was like an extras holding area, but, and I was kind of, you know, minding my P's and Q's because I thought it was, listen, like no matter what I've done in, in my band and how successful I've been in other parts, like this is not, that's not my world. Right. Like, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to go in and and throw my dick over my shoulder and act like I'm, I'm this cool guy being there. Like I was nervous to be there. And it was so cool because like all the, all the people working on the movie would like come up and be like, Hey man, can I take a picture with you? And they'd like take their mask off and take a picture. Like, and obviously I have a shaved face and was still 26 pounds heavier than I am right now then. So like, I, you know, it was, it was, it felt weird, but at the same time, being on that set, you know, I, I hung out in Nelson's trailer because I was kind of in the extras holding area and they'd be like, no, come over here, hang out with us. So I was hanging in Nelson's trailer, which is where I hung for kills a lot too. And I immediately saw two masks. Like mm-hmm. there were, there were obviously multiple masks, like there are for every movie, but I saw two that were separated from, and one had a name on it that I'd never heard of in my life. And one said shape. And I was like, Oh no. <laughs> and then, and then Chris kind of opened the, this drawer where the mask that the masks were on top of. And he said, this is the mask. A lot of people are going to want. And it was the scarecrow mask. And again, I don't know what the scare, I wasn't there on the day that they shot that. So it's like, I just see a cool, like paper mache kind of pullover mask. And I'm like, Oh, that's kind of cool. And now like he was 100% right. Like I want that mask. Yeah, I also want that. Mask. <laughs> like, I, like I really want that mask now, because I was yeah. like, you know, he said it, and I was like, no, no, I don't want that mask. I want, I want one of these, you know, because obviously there's a bunch that that are used in the movie, but you know, yeah, I'm with you. I, I've obviously got a lot of things I want to get into, and a lot of gripes and, and positives, but yeah, I, I agree that I wish I would have seen a scene of how he got to where he was or something like that. Just show him, but I honestly like. I, I'm not upset the same as other people are with like, Oh, there, there wasn't enough Michael Myers. I was fine with the amount of mask I saw. Yeah. I'm I not guess. upset about it. That's just like my criticism. You know, it's like, if I have to come down negatively on something, that's what I wanted. But I agree. Like the people were like, it's not a Halloween movie. It's not a Halloween movie. Yeah. I could not disagree more with that sentiment. It felt all. more like a Halloween movie to me than like five or even even <laughs> kills yeah. even kills you know like i you know i i was i think people and what i'm seeing on my stuff is like people going oh you're just being nice about the movie because you're in the movie no i guess what the movie's over i've right. already filmed it they can't yeah. take me yeah. out of it now um right. i i really liked it like i was pretty harsh on kills for me you know, like I don't like there to me, there was a lot wrong with kills. Although kills other than 2018, it was my favorite Myers. Yeah. He was awesome as my, and that, that has rewatchability to me. Whereas uh-huh. something like resurrection doesn't for no. me where no. I can, I have my gripes with kills too, but I can rewatch that all the time. So there's a entertainment value there, mm-hmm. but yeah, he was awesome. With that. Yeah, I leave kills up while I'm editing a lot because the other ones like 2018. If I throw that on, I, you start I'll, watching I it. We'll stop working and yeah. watch yeah. the movie. Yes, yeah. like yeah. kills. You can just leave on his background noise. You get the Carpenter soundtrack. You can look up at any moment and see Michael Myers killing someone, which is great. Halloween you don't got to pay too much glory. Any yeah. second. Yeah, it's just like that. I had that on last night. Yeah, you can have that on while you're doing something else. Whereas the original Halloween, I'll be like just watching that I'm movie. Stopping so what I think doing. they're. they're yeah if, yeah. if Halloween ends was actually Halloween kills and they switch positions, like the release time, would that have changed your impact on kills or ends in terms that's of a great, that's a great question. 
Ends. Yeah. So uh, I, I said ends feels like a middle. It movie does. It me. does. Yeah, it does. It really I, does. I don't want to hear more of the story. The end yes. would have worked, but I definitely think ends in a middle of a trilogy or whatever feels right to me. I don't know if kills coming after, but the thing about kills is you had so many more actual Correct. kills, and then if they put Laurie, the you know, killing him, that yeah, <laughs> maybe. That's interesting. Yeah, because like they could just all all they would have to do in ends to make it a middle movie is change the ending because. Michael's in pretty much the same spot at the end of 2018 that he is in kills. Like he's pretty injured, you know, pretty damaged, but you know, you, you could have him escape the basement in a very similar way and then cut right into ends and then just have a different ending where he escapes and then have kills have a more definitive ending. And yeah, I think that would work pretty well. I, that's why, that's why I agree that this is going to be better over time with people just because it's hard not to look at it at, in the context of the whole trilogy right now or the whole quadrilogy or whatever. But when you can just watch it as its own movie and kind of remove yourself from the marketing, I think that's when you can really look at it and appreciate it. Like that's what's happening with kills right now where everyone was so disappointed with kills because everything cool was in the trailers and they didn't feel like anything new came out with that movie. But now that you're just removed from the trailers or whatever, you're removed from the hype of leading up to that movie. It's easy to just look at it as what it is. And I I feel like the marketing in this one is the same effect just doing different things where they had like the whole movie really not in the trailers but they had the whole movie that everyone wanted to see in the trailers. so i feel like that's also affecting how people are thinking which yeah that's why i think yeah, it'll I say the marketing time. the marketing for this one absolutely i think is problematic in a sense that it's setting yeah. you up for one thing and they're not even hinting toward anything else and you walk into that movie and you you pretty much have like whatever almost 90 minutes of like yeah. this other thing. and obviously Lori's in it whatever but you're like wait a minute this isn't what i thought i was coming to what's going to happen you know i like and it's that, weird because the description had yeah, it cool. like it under cool. the trailer yeah 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 it's cool the I description like of the trailer on youtube had it like yeah, list it out. and that's the yeah. thing about about, about your videos weird. too, Jimmy. Is like you 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 dissect the trailers a lot. Like I remember when the kills thing came out, and uh, you know you just talking about how much was in the trailers before the even movie came out. And obviously, I was on the set of kills for I was on the set of kills for more days than I was on the set of this. And I'll be like, I was like, yeah, you're right. Like a lot of the big things were in the kills trailer. That's kind of why, mm -hmm. like, yeah, this marketing is a little bit more hinted towards false advertisement, maybe in a way, <laughs> but yeah. I like that. Like, I like that they were reversing shots. I, you know, cause Me like too. they were trying Me to play too. it. They were trying to play I a trick no with the hand. With like I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool. And you know, here's the thing after even being on set for as long as I was and watching the trailer, like I had no idea that like Lori suicide scene was coming. Like I didn't know that I didn't know the end of what we saw in the trailer with the door opening. I didn't know the pre the precursor to that was like a fake suicide thing. Like that's I thought that was like and that excellent. Got me. I was like, oh man, is, it is this really me. happening? Like I can't, I can't believe it got me. Like it felt so dumb. Like as a Halloween fan, like I was like, I no, know, but that's Lori, why we're all here. Do that. We're, that's why we're all here. Yeah. We're all nerds, and it's that's okay. This is a safe <laughs> space to talk about how emotional. <laughs> A movie was for you. Like, you know, with me with kills, it was all right. I, and listen, and, and this is something I even talked to David Gordon Green about is I was like, you know, cause he was, when I was on the set of kills, he was like, what'd you think about 18? Cause everyone had told him like, what a fan I was. And I said, I go, honestly, I loved it. Cause I, 18 to me is probably still top four Halloween great. Movie for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was like, I yeah. don't like gore. It may, I know, I know that's what a lot of people like for me, my favorite carpenter quote has is, and always will be. Everybody knows what a guy with a knife's going to do. You don't have to show it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's like, obviously, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good quote. That's, like on, that. that's my favorite quote he's ever said. And if you watch some of the early, um, what some of the early, like when the 25th anniversary was coming out, like I have all those DVDs of like all the commentary mm -hmm. of the 25th, the yeah. 30, the 35th. I have all those DVDs. And I remember when he said that, I was like, that's why you love 78, right? Is there's no blood The literally the only blood in 78 is like on her arm. Like that's really it. There's <laughs> like no blood in the whole movie. And that's, and like, I remember when he said that quote, I was like, wow, you're right. And that now, to get into my gripes and Spencer is about to jump on here in five minutes, but I'll get, and I want to know his thoughts on the overall. And then we'll start getting like one of my gripes. And this one was 
to me, I did feel a lack of suspense. Like I, I wasn't on the edge of my seat. Maybe ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah. You know, when the yeah, kid there, fell there, down there, the steps, maybe because I have a kid that age, about. you know, I was like that, but yeah, that there, was, that was brutal. For sure. There, but there I wasn't like a that. lot of suspense. Like I wasn't ever like, mm-hmm. you know, wet. And honestly, and then when on my third watch and second watch, you obviously, for people who've only watched it once, you, you you maybe not notice this stuff. I try to look at the whole frame every time I'm watching the movie and I still missed like, I missed Michael probably five times the first time I watched it. Yeah, they did a good job hiding stuff in the background. Uh, that's something I noticed on the third time that I didn't on the first was in the Dr. Mathis's house when, you know, before the redhead nurse uh, discovers Corey before she flips the light on, you yeah. can like barely see him in the background. Yeah, you see like, him in the background. Stabbing. Yep. Uh, yeah. Dr. Mathis. I did not catch that the first two times. Nope. And then the third, third time, time on the IMAX screen, I was like, oh, dude, that's like so good. And he's just like over and over. Yeah. It's almost more brutal in the dark than it is when the lights are on. It's like scarier. I think that when you so notice it though, yeah, I, how that's much work same, went into that. Same for me. Third, third watch on that one. Third watch on him walking up uh, during the homeless guy scene mm-hmm. in the right corner of the screen. Uh, yeah. When he when he drags Corey in, uh, didn't yeah. see that the first. I, I take it you guys did see that one. Yeah, I saw that one, and I saw his face. All like his face is like imprinted into a lot of the it's walls on the walls. Cool. Yeah, it's on That's the wall. Wild. Like I started seeing that. Yeah, yeah. But if you watch the Corey, cool. if you watch the Corey scene again where he drags him in, if as soon as they show the the wide shot of the tent and all that, if you look in the far right corner, you see him walking to get Corey. He was outside yeah. Yeah, under the bridge. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, that's why, like, for me, like, that was a third watch one, too. And then the one, and obviously in Dr. Mathis's house, you know, I thought was really cool, too. Like, that was like, did you see yeah, anything, John, that. in there that you, that like wasn't in there? Oh, How many times the, did you uh, watch it? I've watched it three times. When the, we saw the bike, we were on the bridge. If you look yeah, on the yeah. wall, it says, uh, I think, like, let love, wi- love, love lives, lives today. Or, Love, Love lives, lives today. today. And I'm like, well, that's a kind of a cheeky <laughs> kind of middle finger to all the evil, evil dice. I think they were, I, I think, and I would hope that they were making fun of themselves. I would hope so too, because that came off as super, but I'm like little stuff like that makes, that's make, makes this type of movie re- really watchable for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can find something new every time. Right. You know? That's the thing that I do like about it is it, is it has this almost like Star it Wars-esque all, quality not to of cut like you finding off, but I new think things. The weirdness for me is, I, I, it's like you do this as a conclusion. Whereas if they said, "Hey, maybe there's a fourth one coming," I would have the suspense would have been there for me. But I knew the outcome either way was going to be he's going to die, she's going to die, or they're both going to die. There's no other outcome. Where if you, there was a fourth movie, you could have maybe killed Lori suicide in this one, or you could have had now the 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 George kid continue on or something. But it's like you knew the conclusion was there. That's what that's what that, kind of threw that, me. It was, it was that kind of like, overshadowing yes. effect in the movie where you knew. I'm looking at my watch, going. I got 15 more moment. minutes. What's coming? Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude. That's me. So that's me. Whenever, whenever me and my my wife makes fun of me because I I once we get to like the tail end of a series or something, I start really okay. slowing down on watching episodes because like I'm so emotionally yeah. attached to it. I don't want yeah. it to end. And my wife says that about me. She's like, when you're watching it, she's like, you'll start being like, oh, I'll be like, there's 15 minutes left. They have a lot of ends to close here. Yeah. Yeah, There's a a, a lot of ends they need to tie up. You know, like, I think I remember that with like Breaking Bad, like all the Sons of Anarchy, all these shows I was watching. I'm like, yo, they got 21 minutes to fix like seven (laughs) things I can think of, or at least bring them up. And I'm the same way. I was like, I was watching this movie like, I know it's only almost two hours. Like, all right, we're getting there. And I was like, what is going to like happen? But uh, yeah, again, one of my gripes was the, I I was really, I was kind of bummed with the, with the lack of like, to me, 78 is all suspense, right? Like it's, yeah, you never know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like this build up, and that's what I really love. All right. Spencer's about to come in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our friend Spencer from ice nine kills horror horror uh, uh buff if you will there he is Hi. what's up dude so, i so sorry i'm late it's all good uh this is i don't know if you know ben i don't know if you know ben from fright rags yeah oh yeah oh yes 
Oh, and then Jimmy Champagne, oh, uh, Jimmy Champagne, YouTube legend. I'll call him because I like his YouTube channel. Oh, thanks. <laughs> What's up, Jimmy? Appreciate and this that. Is, this hey, is man, John. Nice this you. is John, our head of security for Shine Down, and this is Spencer, ladies and gentlemen, from Ice Nine. No, well, nice we 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 were we weren't really deep into it, but we had started getting into it. So we'll we'll go to you. How many times? First off, how many times have you seen it so far? Uh, I have seen it twice. Okay. Two times. Yeah. One time in the theater, thanks to you. Yes, Zach. Yes, I gave you my premiere, premiere tickets, tickets that I could <laughs> make. What a kind gentleman! Someone who sees another Halloween fan in in peril and and comes to the rescue. So thank you for that. Um, what are your? Give us your just your generic overview. Well, see, I, I tend to be in the minority in terms of what I like about the Halloween franchise. So I'll just preface it with that. Like for instance, I love the curse of Michael Myers. No one else really seems to love the curse of Michael Myers. And I like, I like the theatrical and, and even in the smaller minority of Halloween fans, I like the theatrical cut more than the producer's cut. Oh, well, we're Um, going to disagree there, but okay. (laughs) Not everybody's perfect. I love curse. Um, Love curse. And I actually, like Halloween kills better than 2018. Um, I, I was just rewatching that uh, last night. You can't beat those flashback sequences um, and the brutality of it. Cause I'm also a big Friday the 13th fan. And I, I thought that there was some um, uh, of Jason's DNA in that movie, just in terms of the brutality and the gore. Um, so going to Halloween ends, I really enjoyed it. I was looking for something that was different. And to me, in, in that respect, it, it delivered in spades. Um, and then after viewing it and seeing all this talk about, you know, everything from the title cards of 2018 matching up to the original and uh, a, um, Halloween 2 matching up to Halloween Kills and now Halloween ends with the title cards um being season of the witch, to, yeah. um, season of the witch, and then all those other parallels that you start to see, and you start to realize, or at least I, I'm starting to realize how intentional that was. They they knew that Halloween ends was going to be a dep- from what you were used to, just as season of the witch was. And uh, uh, you know, I, I don't love everything about it. Uh, although I don't really love everything about any film, I really love. There are things that I would change, but. Um, I, I definitely respect the uh, the risks that it t- took, and uh, I was uh, I was pleased with the outcome. Yeah, I we were just we were just kind of getting into the gripes. Well, one thing you brought up though that I find interesting that I didn't realize though, and maybe I should have. I realized the title credits on one being closer to one, two being closer to two, and then as soon as the blue credits popped up in the intro, I was like, oh, season of the witch. But one thing you said, though, that kind of got me, which is real, is like they kind of did it. It's kind of similar, right? Like how, like 2018's in the arc of these three movies is closer to one. Kills is definitely closer to two to where there's a lot more blood because in 78, there's no blood. He's way more brutal in two, just like he is in Kills. And then- Takes place the same night. Takes, takes place, place the, the same, same night. night. Yep. And then also, and, and ends- it's they knew it was going to be a divisive movie, just the same way that that you know season of the witch was. I, I dig that. I, I, I didn't. I didn't realize. I as soon as I saw the credits, though, I was like, okay, I get what they're doing now. Like I, I thought that yeah. was really cool. We were just and getting. It was into, a nice nod to say that they knew that what they were doing. Like, that's what I love. About it. They, and and yeah. and knowing David Gordon Green, like the guy is really smart. So to, to, to put those things in perspective, I think that's maybe something he kind of had from the beginning that he knew he was going to do because that makes sense for him. Yes. Yeah. At least when he knew there was going to be another two, you know, cause I, I think 2018, I feel was still supposed to be a singular film. Right. Like I think yeah. that was still kind of the idea. And then it was like, Oh shit, we just made a ton of money. So, Hey, I got an idea. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's, and it's, it's, like, it's, it's, dude. it was Halloween four all over again. Right. Like let's make a fourth yeah. one. It did so well. Let's go ahead and just do this next one, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. also, uh, I'm sure you guys can agree, um, for, for me at least, with horror films, you need a huge opening 
You know, uh, you think about the original Halloween, how shocking that was as a little kid seeing it and just going up and, you know, someone killing the sister naked was obviously shocking. And then you turns around and it's, you know, it's just a little kid. Yeah. To me, this was a huge opening. Like the fact that, you know, you think you're getting Michael Myers is going to come in and, and do something to this babysitter and this little kid. And then the twist is Michael Myers has nothing to do with the beginning, but that was such a shocking death of that little kid that I thought that that really opened the door um, for, for like, Hey, let's bring back the big opening. Cause I, I really like 2018, but one of the things I wish it had, I wish it had a bigger moment to open that film. Um, as much as I like that scene in the, the psych ward, this is that moment that I was looking for, like the Casey Becker scream moment that yeah. really kind of shocked the audience. Yeah. It's executed it perfectly. Weird, yeah. I was thinking, and I don't know, maybe they thought of this as a weird reversal. Cause in the beginning of the first Halloween, you have the uh, kid killing the babysitter, which was so weird for that time. Obviously it was a shock, right? This time you have the babysitter killing the kid. He was babysitting, you know, it might've been an accident, but it's total 180, which I thought was wild too. I didn't yeah, I was listening. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was listening to um, an interview with uh, Collider, I think it was. And he said basically like anything where it was like a trope like that, like having a babysitter on Halloween night, he tried to reverse it. And like he filmed it both ways, I guess, and then went with the one that worked better. And for him, he was talking about how like nine times out of 10, the reversal of the trope worked better. And I agree here, like that intro, like cuts super well. I like how just like they hang on the kid hidden in the ground for a few frames longer than they need to. So you yeah. actually see it. And you like, if you pause it, you can see the, like the makeup effect on it. it's crazy. And I, I just loved it. I thought that's what really sold me on the movie. I didn't know it was going to be that different going in, but then I was like, okay, that intro just earned like my respect. I'm here for the whole thing. Like I want to see how this plays out. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I like that. I like that you brought that up because to me, like it was such a change of tone from a normal Halloween movie. It kind of got you right in. Cause of course, when you see him show up and you see that there's a kid there, the parents are gone. You're like, okay, Michael Myers is going to kill this kid. And like, you know, the, or the baby, you know, you knew the babysitter wasn't going to die obviously um, because of who he was, but yeah, it definitely felt that way. And to have it go another way and just completely flip, flip the script on it. I thought that was really cool. Like that was one of the positives for me. And again, I like, you missed it when we were talking about our, our initial reaction, Spencer, but like, I love the movie. I'm not, I don't really get the backlash that it's getting. Like for me, the main backlash is there's not enough Michael. And I'm like, I'm such a 78 fan. I'm like, I thought about going back and watching exactly how many minutes that Michael's in 78. Cause he's barely in 78, like barely, you don't really see him. Right. A lot. So I didn't really get the gripe of him not being in this film. I was like, he's in the film more than he is in 78. I feel like. Which, which actually reminds me of the controversy not to jump to a different franchise that like people have problem with Jason goes to hell and Jason not being in it a lot. But if you, if you ask up all the minutes he's in, he's probably in it as much as he was in like part two through four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, I mean, I, I understand the criticism just because, you know, you're going to see Halloween. Michael Myers is all over the, all over the billboards and all over the advertising. You want Michael Myers. But, um, but yeah, I agree with what you said. We're, uh, well, let's start getting into, let's get into some gripes about, we have a thing on this podcast where it's basically known as my gripes. And I just, I start, I basically just bitch about normal things, but now we're just going to bitch about things that we didn't like about a movie. So, uh, John, since you've talked the least, which is very rare for this podcast. Well, I just, uh, you guys are all, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm, I'm a, I respect the franchise and I'm a fan of horror movies, so I'm not really invested per se as I would maybe in Scream or. But you like movies in general. You're maybe, the, you, you actually might be the, the biggest movie buff I know. Uh, not, not, you know, yeah, no, I love, genre I, non-specific. I love yeah, yeah, I know. I, I adore movies. It's just, I, for me, I don't know. Like I, I got my, I guess what gripe was when I saw the theater on Thursday the people were like booing or like pissed off it, or like that. Wow. Really? Yeah. It was people like, it, well, I, I live in Bath. Like I went to a theater in New Hampshire. So he lives in, he oh, lives in, wow. he's living near Boston kid. They're, they boo yeah. anything. Of that. <laughs> we're all smart on our politics kid. I uh, know. So <laughs> we're just, so people are like, Oh, that sucked. It was like, I, as a viewer, I sit back, I go, 
part of it's like I'm like, well, I knew like the makeup guy. I know James Jude. Like I know Zach. I mean, I so I'm kind of like not protective of it, but I was like, for me to hate a movie, I have to put aside the fact that I or I have to know that the people behind the movie or the producers, directors, cast or whoever are fucking shitty people. They're terrible people. They don't give a shit about the craft or just have no relation to it whatsoever. Right. These people work super hard on a story that I think suited the story they wanted to create. I think I know. So when people bitch and gripe about for no reasons or the casual viewer that maybe saw the trailer thinking, oh, Michael Myers is going to be having sex for 90 minutes in this movie. You're not... (laughs) That's the thing too. I, I guess a grant for Michael Myers, as opposed to like say Jason or Freddie, you at least see them do other stuff besides killing. Like I've seen them sit down or lay down or do other activities. Michael Myers, like does that like I've never seen that guy eat. Like there's like like I, is this I, your grant? Gri- yeah, because I don't. I watch the uh, I watch kills. And this whole time, like, you don't have to wipe your blood off your hands if you kill people. Like, I get it. You're a psycho killer. But, dude, after a couple of kills, like, do you think you should, like, dude, sit down and have a cigarette? Like, dude, <laughs> you are tired. Jason or Freddie, like, those guys will putz around, do dumb <laughs> shit. Michael Myers has no outside of where he snaps that kid's head. In the second one, kind of like, which I'm glad he did. Uh, <laughs> like, there's no, like, humor in him. Like, there's no, like... I wish he was more like, like I don't know, like a casual killer, maybe. Like he's too like in his own world. Well, everybody I on this podcast right now, he does have a sense of humor. I think, obviously, yeah. uh, in the first movie, he seventy-eight does shows that. Does. I think he I does. does oh, yeah. the big jaw, the big jaw, sure little jaw thing was great. Like clearly, yeah. he was replicating the picture frame, uh, the picture of them. I just, I just, I wish he was more like, I don't know, like I just picture those other guys as like more. I'm not saying do the dishes or like get gassed, <laughs> but my like the big right for this new movie, it's like he four years in this tunnel. No one saw him walking around or no one questioned the missing homeless population. Like Haddonfield doesn't have the, the population of Chicago. If you saw six homeless <laughs> people disappear in a year, dude, someone said maybe firebomb the tunnel system here. What this is, uh, what, what the people with the guests like, it's right just now, stupid. what the guests on this podcast are learning and what our listeners and our fans have always known is that John is, is a psychopath actually <laughs> just like, uh, <laughs> truly a psychopath. Um, yeah, I, and here's the thing. I agree with the, one of the things you said was one of my gripes, which was, um, especially when all the Corey stuff was going like, how's he getting to all these places? Right. He, he's he's right. clearly the age. He's running. Okay. So the, yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> not on the treadmill. He's not trading for the movie. <laughs> so what's interesting, it seemed like they aged him those four years super, like he aged too quickly. Because we got the shit kicked years, out of him yeah, in but one when, night you know a lot. And he's 65 old. years old. Which goes <laughs> to my point. You don't treat your wounds. Like you don't like. He Dude, did he, in kills. He did in kills. He was, house, he was, he was taping. He was wrapping right. it up. Get an IV or something, man. And get some vitamin <laughs> C in your blood system or something. <laughs> get some blood. Yeah. One of my sick. one of my big gripes was was how like Drink water. anytime it's it's any other Halloween movie, right? It's always centrally located. He's never going off site miles. It's all he was always kind of in one spot. So yeah. when someone made the meme of of Michael on the back of the bike with Corey, which I thought was fucking <laughs> yes, hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that made sense because I was like, how is he getting, like, how do he get to, yeah. how do you get to the doctor's house? It's like very Jason, how you can just kind of like teleport. It, Cause yeah, 1978, he's got a car, he's driving around, he's mobile, yeah. you know, yeah, he's in this the station one, wagon. He, he's ethereal. He's just showing up, but they did a good job of making it. So like, there's a gap of time between like seeing Corey at Dr. Mathis's house. Then yeah. you see Michael. Corey has a long time at Lori's house before Michael actually shows up. So Maybe he's just walking, you know, enjoying this night on Halloween. Jimmy, I know you. I, I know you have some gripes. Me, Go. yeah, uh, dude. The scene. Okay, the first time I saw it, the scene where Corey goes to into the tunnel to get the mask. I, in my mind, like on the screen I saw it on, it was like far away and it was a smaller screen. It looked like. Corey had the upper hand the entire fight. Like he was getting, like Michael was getting shoved back into frame. And I was like, that's like, that's too much. And then the second time I saw it, I was like, oh, okay. It's Michael shoving Corey back. But that 80 yard line that they have where he's like, you have something that belongs to me. And you can see his lips not even moving and the delivery on it's like super weird. That just like, 
I was like, why, why would you? <laughs> I didn't need that. I know that he stole the mask because he's got it in his hand. I don't need the like weird one liner after you there's just a like couple, dominated Michael. There's a couple really big ADR misses in there. One when they leave the party and they're talking outside and they yeah, I call the, in there. The coverage yes. shot, the coverage shot is is Allison. And it's like clearly not what Corey's saying. Like there's like, it's literally, it's probably, probably yeah. 20 seconds long of Corey's back yeah. and the coverage is on Allison and, and you can tell like whatever I would, I want to know what he said in that spot because they redid the whole thing. You He's can like, tell I've been hanging out with Michael Myers. They, you can tell. Yeah. Oh, he has a, yeah, at that point. <laughs> you can tell they <laughs> redid the whole thing. bullied by high school. I agree with you though. One of my gripes was that too. Like you just got the shit kicked out of you by four band nerds just absolute fucking nerds. And then you go in there and you just take this dude's mask. Like get the fuck out of here. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just not the, the guy, the kid, like how do you fight off Michael Myers? Cause clearly his strength is still there. If he can lift a woman against the wall, put a knife through her and pin her. You, if I, if I'm Michael Myers, and I see George, that kid coming at me. There's no way he's Corey. taking my mask. <laughs> you Corey, know his whatever. name is Corey. George. You know his name is Corey. No, no you were doing that on purpose. I know you were doing there's it no, on purpose. There's no way that Corey is <laughs> taking my mask. Like, it just didn't seem plausible that in four mm. years' time, he went from a killing machine to a older guy who's – he's not clearly not dying because he's still there. But it hold just on. Seemed that, he got the shit kicked out of him. He got shot. He got stabbed. And he, now he's 65 years old. This and is all in one night. A police you've, cruiser, had, you got. you've had four years to recover. He's been eating homeless people no, and drinking no, sewer no, water. He's not <laughs> drinking vitamin water. There's one. He's Pops got a horrible Tylenol. diet. Yeah, it's just, Spencer. Like, Spencer, what to, gripes did you have about it? I got way more, but um, just to go off what you guys were saying, um, and obviously, you know, every schmuck like me has their idea of how they would want to do uh, do it differently. I think maybe if I would have enjoyed the Corey element of, of him sort of becoming Michael or taking on the essence of his evil, if it was shrouded in a little bit more mystery and mystique, like, like, as you were saying, like if we didn't actually see him take the mask um, yeah. and maybe, and maybe there was a scene where we think, we think it is Michael, right? Michael's walking around. He's about to kill somebody. And then maybe the real Michael, you know, grabs his arm or something and you realize, oh, shit, you know, it's Corey. We thought we were watching Michael in the scene, but then it turns out to be Corey. Um, that that would, would have been sort of one idea I would have that would um, kind of fix that that sort of it being too on the nose of seeing him grab the mask. Because I agree, I don't like to see I don't like to see Michael being, you know. Shut manhandled and- by a guy who just got kicked, got, got his ass kicked by a guy who plays flute in the fucking Haddonfield right. high school band. Exactly. Well, let, me, let me ask you this, Spencer. Would, would George or uh, Carl, would he stab himself Carl. in the deck? That is that, is, so is that that's not very odd becoming of Michael Myers, right? The evil essence. Like, why would you commit suicide there unless he was trying to maybe eternal battle? Like, what was your thought that pro- that your thought process with that? I, I did like that scene. I thought that that was um, the creepiest and scariest. It was. We saw yeah. from Corey, like he had almost like a, almost like a Jack Nicholson shining yeah. kind of vibe yeah. there, where he was laughing and um, he realizes, you know, I'm going to take my own life just just to further screw up the relationship between Allison. That's and 100% Corey. why he did it. Um, yeah, and that, that that was badass. I thought that that was really cool. Um, I would just, I, I wanted the, the, um, reveal of, of Corey being Michael to be more of a, a surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did like yeah. that scene very much. I agree with that. I agree with the, I, I wanted that reveal to mean more. And like you said, here's the thing. I don't know. Maybe all of us on this thing should just write a horror movie because when you brought up the shot of him, like maybe like you think it's Michael and you see somebody grab his arm, like that would have been a great shot to establish who's who so i agree with that uh ben what, and then i would have liked to see him just beat the <laughs> shit out of Corey. yeah like like of literally, course. Yes. Like literally yeah. beat him to death like um once upon a time in hollywood style yeah. with brad pitt at the end of that yeah. movie. just like so such a long drawn out shot hanging on and just beating him to a pulp we were all waiting because on maybe him. that would have made maybe that would have made the scene with him being manhandled like 
worth it because it's just like, okay, yeah. now Michael's Michael's like, oh, you thought I was, you know, I'm really right-handed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm coming. Uh, ben, what, uh, what, give me some of yours. Cause I, I still have, I got some too. I mean, I, it really, it's kind of an echo before, but there's this, this whole buddy system that they had going on. I was sort of like, is it, is Corey trying to get this transference of power? Is he trying to kill people? But Michael's trying to like, is he luring him them for Michael? Like, I felt like it was a little confusing as to the point of why Corey was, I mean, I got, I know Corey was becoming evil or whatever, but it was sort of like, Michael wants to be there too and get the upper hand, I guess. I don't know. It felt a little disjointed to me because I couldn't quite understand why they were doing it that way. But I like the idea. I understand why Corey wanted to become sort of Michael and and all that. But like, I don't know, initially with even the doctor and the nurse, like they didn't even mention the doctor and the nurse afterwards. Allison was at work. She's like, I'm at work. And she's, and it's like, yeah, and your boss and the lead nurse aren't there. Isn't yeah. that weird? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it's like, there, no one, no one found out that anyone died in this movie. Yeah. That's, it was just a weird in that way. And what do you think I about mean, that? Mulaney, like no one brought up Mulaney, which is, that's another one of mine too. It was like, there was also no establishing shot of, of him texting Mulaney, of him calling Mulaney, being like, hey, meet me at this sewer. Like, why was Mulaney down by the sewer? Yeah. Oh, he was following. Oh, I think, right? Yeah, I think he was going to kick his ass. Yeah, but did he follow? Down there, right? yeah, yeah, from the he, restaurant. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because he, he gets on his bike and that car behind him follows. Right? Oh, then I'm just a fucking yeah, they idiot don't, three they, times in and didn't watch, didn't, it's super you know, dark. I that. Yeah, yeah, but you see him in the background, yeah. he's following. Okay, that, oh, okay, well, never mind then. I missed bring that. Bring up another. You bring up another um, problem I had. Who, who besides me is not buying that the smoke show that is Andy Matichek is is dating that guy ever in her life? Uh, no, it's just, yeah, on? yeah. That I I talked about that in my review. I was like, so, you, so you're telling I me there's a cut in, but yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's a little weird. Like a yeah, they're I mean, he must too different. He small town hog for sure. I mean, he's small got town. Be yeah, small town. listen. That's true. Wait, I've been on tour my whole life and seen and seen uh, seen tens date threes. You go to Billings, yeah, but, Montana. Uh, you'll see it every day. A Montana ten is not a is not a Nashville six. That's I mean, true. You know, <laughs> that's down true. Here. Hundred. That's one hundred percent accurate. True. Um, sure. Yeah, the the uh, the one thing I, I the, the voiceover thing there was a lot of ADR things I thought were missing. Um, I really now this this one of the gripes is is the is the most obvious line ever is if I can have her nobody can thing, which I thought was just like uh cringy yeah. because like to me this movie was as far as dialogue and acting goes was leaps and bounds better than kills to me. Oh. Yeah. As far as the dialogue and the acting goes, like the like to me, the writing of this movie was maybe the best of any. Even of the, the way three. they had like Will Patton Sheriff, like the grocery store, like the someone that's just recovering, like still did with loss. Like, Hundred percent, he had a little bit of Lori. PTSD. Like, it, it, yeah. it just it just felt genuine. Like maybe this guy actually. Somebody better tell Will Patton here that this is a movie and not real life. Yeah, Will Patton's a good actor though. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The thing, okay, so that's the thing to me is like the the line that I hated was the the if I can have her, nobody can. But I will say this to go on to to say something incredibly positive about the movie, the the Corey Laurie scene in the abandoned Allen house, top five Halloween scene for me in any movie, in any so movie. Good. That yeah. was so good. Like yeah. I thought her her dialogue there and her kind of. You know, she had a little bit of a monologue, I guess, when she's talking about it. And he's walking up the stairs and kind of looks like a psychopath. And she's just kind of clicking the chair on the back of the wall. And she throws the paper airplane at him, like to like just let me just stoke this dude's PTSD really quick. And then she's like yeah. leaning on the chair. And then he starts talking and looks up and then she's gone. Almost in a sense of like, was she ever really there type of thing? Like right. that That's was like I was watching, like I was a you know, again, we talked about how it didn't have a lot of there was really not a lot of uh, um, suspense for me in this movie, but like that was a suspenseful moment for me. Cause I was like, this is maybe one of my favorite scenes of any Halloween movie. I'm a sucker for when in these kind of movies um, you're, you're revisiting the crime scene years later and it looks dilapidated much like they do in yeah. part one with the Myers house and yeah. whatnot. So I thought, I thought that was a great setup and, and that house you know, the first time I saw that um, upward view of the, the the staircase, I mean, 
what what great production value is in, yeah. in that in that location. I thought was that great. was really cool. I, I that was again one of my favorite scenes, and I liked to you know I liked a lot of the throwback stuff too, man. Like I love you know there's so many to the point where in 18 some of it felt a little bit Cobra Kai. So like where, where the throwbacks are like, you're like, you're like, all right, man. Like, yeah. but in yeah. these, like, I actually, I didn't mind them as much. Lori's hat from 78 yeah. is in the corner. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, a thing that I, it took me again, we are talking about third watch things. The third watch I got was the, that it ended like the first movie ended with all the shot yeah. of all the empty the, the rooms. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. anybody else. Yeah. The hat. Yeah. <laughs> Who keeps a hat that long, by the way? <laughs> it's, nice. it's an Maybe important hat. hat. I mean, that is a long time to hold a hat. That's a that's a that's a forty that's a forty but plus speaking, year hat. Speaking of that that montage of, she, of scenes that that echoes the original with going through the house, and I thought I heard an exhale at the end. Am I crazy? I thought I heard one breath at the very end. I Honestly, might just be hearing what I want to hear. Wouldn't I'll shock me because I want it. Yeah. Wouldn't I shock me because because yeah. I love like. The again, I loved the the montage with all the rooms, and it was just kind of like the you know to me when I watched seventy eight, and one, once I watched it as an adult, it was like oh, evil's everywhere. Like it doesn't matter yeah. what rooms are empty or what spaces are empty. This is what evil is, right? But then when they the last shot is the mask laying on her table. Oh yeah, I I didn't I don't think I caught that the first time, but the second time I was like oh oh it's on her table. They Let's show watch. her living room yeah. and the mask. That. The mask is literally just laying on her living room table. Like he's like, dead. Yeah, they got rid of him, cool but she kept the yeah. mask. And I was like, wow, That's like that cool. was a super powerful a trophy. Shot. Yeah. And I, you know, like, um, again, all the throwbacks I thought were really cool. Like the Corey sitting up, you know, after the fall from the radio station, yeah. Michael doing the same thing in the tunnel. Um, Corey out the window by the bush. That one was almost a little egregious. The piano, yeah. a little piano stinger, kind of like piano stinger, drew my yeah. attention away. Yeah. But I was like, mentally, I was like, "Wait, are you?" And then it did the piano thing. I was like, oh, "Okay, I like that." Yeah, it like fixed it for me, stabilized yeah. it. I thought the same thing. I was like, "All right, this is like, you know, I, the, the core, the Corey outside the window was a little bit egregious." I was like, "Yeah, that's a yeah. little too close to the and original." It's kind of like standing there, like all yeah, weirdly. Like, sort yeah, of like, okay, yeah, that's what I did. That's what. Yeah, that's what I didn't like. And like, yeah, but then you know, again, want to talk about you know, there, how there wasn't a ton of suspense in there for me. Like that was actually a suspenseful scene when he walks up behind her like that. It got me like a little bit, but there, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Oh, when he just shows up. Yeah. yeah he just shows up. I was like, oh. I thought they got me both times. I was like, damn. I'm yeah. And I got to, my, like, I got to be on the jump scares, you know, on the set. I was there when they filmed a lot of the sewer stuff I was there for. They, because it was a practical set, they built it they ended up building it with moving walls and everything on the, in the studio or in this big warehouse. And actually there's an, it, um, I, I may have a picture of it. I'll send it in the JR to put it in the podcast we do, but I have, I think I have a picture of the outside of the sewer, but I also, they built a complete replica of Lori's house on the, on the set with all the interiors. That's cool. That's crazy. Well, yeah. So they that had, was a cool house. Yeah. So they that had, they nice had wild walls and stuff where they could move it out. But yeah, a, a lot of that, and they were doing a lot of the behind the scenes interviews. One of the days that I was there with that, which was cool. What did you think of the final fight? Like I, she took some punishment in there that I thought was pretty cool, but it's like, dude, I don't know. Realistically having smashed someone's face through a, a cupboard before, I don't know how you come up from that. Like she did. <laughs> Um, she had no cuts no like, cuts like, like, do I, you think it was a realistic way to end that fight i will say that i liked that i didn't know what was coming because i definitely thought she was gonna die yep mm-hmm. so I, I did enjoy that i wish it would have been a little longer i could have used mm-hmm. more of it um and i thought the i thought the risk cutting was a little unnecessary the yeah. way they did it. it and then brutal. And then my last gripe again, like, so, you know, I'm different than John and I know, I know Spencer's a gore guy. Like I'm not a gore guy. Like I'm like, op, like I want suspense. Give me suspense over gore. All the gore long. has to have a purpose for me. Give me like, a purpose for the gore. Kick someone's head in. I need to see the head kicked in. And my last, my last gripe, okay, I guess. You guys be, should not watch Terrifier 2. Oh, dude. He, yeah. he already watched it. It was the first thing they talked <laughs> about. Did. 
I just so had badass. David the Cloud on my podcast. It was I insanity. Yeah, he was. Uh, that was the first Sorry. thing they were talking about on the movie. Is he was saying like uh, he's like John told uh, who hadn't seen it. Ben or Jimmy? I haven't seen it. Yet. Seen it. No, I got to. They it were just yet. said, "Don't oh, even man. watch." They were like, so "Don't good. even watch part one. Just watch part two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Good. My last gripe has to do. I want to get everybody else's thoughts on the fight, but the, my last gripe is during the fight. Um, the Allison breaking the arm thing felt a way forced and b She's that strong way right. fake. Yeah, that's those are my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, they're not a lot of thoughts. I I mean, just thought yeah, that unless the arm was pre-broken from the four years ago, the fight, which yeah. may be possible, but it just, she doesn't have, I'm sorry, but yeah. it's just not, But did she use the table as a leverage? Did she use the table as a lever? She, to, but it, like it was supposed to look like that. Down. It was supposed to look like she used the table it, for it leverage, but it high, didn't. It was, like, it was too high up. Well, it was a little high up, wasn't yeah. it, when she grabbed I mean, it? I thought she yeah. used the table as a fulcrum. I know? wanted coverage of it. Like, yeah, it felt like it was missing a shot in between. So maybe they got it. it I was also right emotional, not, not, not crying here, but like <laughs> I hated seeing him die, which is why I love Jason or Freddie. Like all these people always come back. And it's like for yeah. me to see him actually die, get chopped up. I was like, no way, James. The how is she, he just made that character? I don't know. Like I texted him too. I go, man, I was pissed off he got killed. I was hoping she, you killed her, but you made the character so believable in the sense of. Yeah, this guy's a monster. He's a killer. But for whatever reason, tw- the middle of that fight is he's getting pinned down by the refrigerator. I felt empathy towards him because he's doesn't he's not going to make it out of the seat. I, I just got like really down. Maybe, maybe I'm psychotic. No, I think that uh, means I think that means you I, actually I, too. I, I think that too. means that you actually care about the character it. more than you're saying, because all the, the rest of us on here love Michael Myers so much that like I, just, I was emotional I, I because I knew love- this thing was ending. If, if you've yeah. already done 45 Jason movies or a thousand ghost face or a thousand leprechaun movies, there's no need to kill the guy. Just keep the story going people. So yeah. I'm just kind of like, I was just like, man, James is such a good one. Like when you can see parts of his eyes, like you knew he wasn't crying per se, but you do like, fuck man. He, he is, he's not getting out of here. It, it was yeah. to your point. It was like, it was like, super speaking like, of his fun. eye, this is final. there's his eye. It's his eye. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. That's his eye. That's rad. Um, uh, Jimmy, yeah, what are your thoughts on the uh, what are your thoughts on the fight, dude? I I wish it was longer, but I feel like what we got was just cut down to what we needed. You know, like there's no fat on that, and I get why they do stuff like that because if you make it too long or you have a weird shot in there, that's the only thing anyone's going to focus on. And then like not having that arm break seat, like actually be shown on screen. I was like, Oh yeah, they're probably editing it down just to make sure it's as like ruthless and like well cut as possible. So the first time I saw it, I I thought he was going to get up when he pulled his hand out and choked her. I thought he was going to somehow like shove the fridge up or something like that. And I it, like my heart was beating like super fast, like super racing fast. And then it ends and I'm like, OK, blah, blah, blah. I see it the second and third time. And it still gets me going like every time. Like I still feel that like well up, you know, where I'm like, oh, this is a brutal fight. And what I realized on subsequent viewings is like he starts the movie weaker than Lori because, you know, he, he can barely kill Doug. He, he needs help. But yeah. as he kills, he gets a little bit stronger. And I'd say like in that fight, he's like 1% stronger than Lori, maybe a couple percent more. So it felt like almost evenly matched, but like he still felt like to me the entire time he had the upper hand specifically because of the knitting needle. I was like, oh, that's brutal. Like if he gets a good like angle on her, he can kill her with that knitting needle, which is like a great reversal. The split hand effect so, too was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looked really good. They, they showed oh, yeah. that just enough so you could see it. Just and see how bloody and like to the messy point where was, I didn't see it till the second time. Just a shot. I didn't see it till the yeah, second time. Yeah, it looks so cool. And I've seen that in a couple of movies. Yeah, yeah Chris Nelson's gore. That's incredible. I was saying Chris's oh, yeah. uh, Chris Nelson's effects on this movie were just oh, the so DJ good. with the tongue. It was the tongue. It's the tongue. It's the tongue. Yeah. 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 Really, the tongue was actually the this one. The tongue was a gripe for me, and then the the same thing. right? Yeah, I don't too much. Too much, too much score. Sorry, I like uh, the I tongue. Saw, I like the tongue on the on the vinyl. I didn't like the tongue. I didn't like the showing the, the cutting like, off of the focus tongue. Shot. I, mm-hmm. I spoke with Chris at the premiere, and he was saying that he was so surprised that they actually used the, the tongue part. He thought that for sure, no pun intended, was going to be cut out. 
Um, <laughs> we kind of just did it for fun. Like, oh, let's go back to like, you know, the splatter. Yeah. Splatter it genre. so level. real though. Like with it the did. flipping under the needle oh, and stuff. Yeah. He's, up with it. A, he's, a big, he's a big yeah. idea, man. Like a lot of, and, and that's, that's another attest to David Gordon Green because a lot of the times, a special effects makeup guy, that's just what they are, right? Like I know, I know mm-hmm. the intro credits to two were Nelson's idea or to kills. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was Nelson that brought that up to him. So I think I, that's what one thing I love about David mm-hmm. Gordon Green too, is like, you know, the guy coming up to me and again, like we were talking about this before you hopped on Spencer, like me being on the set of that movie. Sure. Like in my own thing that I do in my own world, I'm this successful person. And I've done well, but like on that, I'm dude, I'm an extra. You know what I mean? Like, and it felt yeah. good. Like the cast, you know, a lot of the <laughs> cast and the crew were coming up to me and asking me to take pictures and stuff. But like, I'm minding my P's and Q's. I'm just like, yo, just tell me where to go. Like, I'm not walking around with my dick over my shoulder. Like, I'm just like, ha- like dude, I'm just the happy to be here guy. You know what I mean? Like, but, <laughs> and same thing on kills on kills. I was just hanging out, but to have David come up to me and go, what do you think? Or what do you think we should do here? Like, I was just kind of flabbergasted that, you know, he cares so much about the movie that like, he wants to know what fans think. Like he really was like, and it was genuine. It was like, he came up to me during a scene, like, and was like, yo, what do you, what do you think about this? And I'm like, I think it's really cool. Like, I think the angle that you have, cause I was watching the monitors, you know, and just, and it was a really cool, and I have a story about James to tell later too, but I thought that was cool. Um, I want to get, uh, what about, what was Spencer, what on, on the fight? I know you've already talked a little bit about it, but. I thought it was really uh, well choreographed and exciting. Uh, I did, I did um, think that the arm break that that's the same kind of reaction I had. I was like, this is like a Steven Seagal or Wesley Snipes movie. Like, oh yeah, no, no, twenty-two year old girl is coming over and yeah, yeah. you know breaking the arm. Very like Steven that. But, Seagal. Um, very mm-hmm. Steven Seagal, like under siege or. Was he sniped passenger 57, you know, when the guy knows like yeah, jujitsu yeah. and shit. Um, but I thought it was uh, a really cool emotional scene. I loved how it was sort of passion of the Christ uh, style with the, you know, uh, uh, you know, stabbing him into uh, the table with both hands. I thought that was kind of cool. Almost like a, a Jesus kind of slasher moment there for a second. And then the, the, the throat slicing was, uh, I thought, very emotional slash no pun intended brutal and then i love the shot of her like holding his hand which kind of to me echoed um sort of shades of h2o's ending when she's kind of holding michael's yeah. hand because i don't i don't i don't count resurrection as part of the series so you I'm should, right? that was michael you um, should read buster Rhymes but, movie yeah, yep. yeah fantastic um but as i was thinking about the ending just now i was like could it have been cool if they pulled sort of a Halloween two uh, with Dr. Loomis deciding that, you know, like, like she was sort of foreshadowing, maybe the only way for him to die is for me to die as well. That could have been an interesting other way to sort of kill him. If there was a scene written in where she knew that the only way for him to die was she'd have to sacrifice her life too. I don't know if she's like handcuffing him before something explodes, but. That could have been a cool way to end it too. Yeah, uh, my I have a question about that. Even on three watches, that line's in the trailer. It's not in the movie. Am I right? No. Yeah. No, it's not in the movie. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, ben sounds like looking for it. What was your uh, what were your what were your fight thoughts? I'm sure we've all touched on most of them, but I mean, I I read it and I think it was a slash film article where they they said um someone and I it put it in a good way like she killed him with. The opposite way he kills. It wasn't a brutal kill. It was brutal in the sense that she slipped his all his veins. It wasn't much, aggressive, though. Him, but it was done with. It was done with almost care. Yeah, and almost. I don't know if it was sympathy as much as it was with care and precision, as opposed to just I'm going to stab you until you're dead. And I thought that was again. It was her letting go. It was her releasing all of her pent up forty plus forty four years of, of you know her trauma and, and all of what's been, been following her for this time and her being able to release it. And it was actually a physical release of his blood from his body. It was her release of all of that. And I thought that, you know, that was a nice way to do it as opposed to her, you know, getting um, enraged, you know? And I do think if she had killed herself with him or like Spencer, what you said, I think that's an interesting idea. I think it starts taking away from the fact that, because evil is going to keep changing shape, right? Yeah. So 
it would almost be too traumatic because you'd almost want to see here right off in the sunset, but you still know evil is going to come back some way, shape or form, whatever it is. And I, you know, it's nice to have her get her moment, you know, because even like having her in the, um, with uh, Frank in the, in the grocery store, she was a kid again. She was that, that 18 year old who was afraid to ask Ben Tramer out, you know, yeah. and to allow her that at the end, I think was nice. I think if she died, it almost would have felt, too sad it would have felt too sad and here we were able to at least in a weird way sympathize with that Myers character kill him off in such a grand way but have her still have sort of that moment on the porch at the end and have it move on I thought it was pretty sweet but um yeah I thought the fight was great and and like what Jimmy said I think distilling it down they really distilled it down it could have been maybe longer I, again it goes back to like the original where that last you know, whatever 10 minutes is just suspense and you don't know what's going to happen. I would have liked it a little bit more like that, but I get it. I, I understand. I'm, I was missing some way. tension. I wanted some, I wanted yeah, a little, that? I wanted a little bit of tension. You know? Yeah. 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 For sure. That's the one thing I missed about it. And also like, so I don't know if anybody caught this real quick on her refrigerator. Cause we, we got, you know, we got some high res images earlier on, Well, not, not early enough, unfortunately, yeah. but um, <laughs> I got this shirt though. That's a whole thing. <laughs> If you zoom in, yeah. If you zoom in on the refrigerator and you can't see it in the movie, there's actually an ad for Phelps Garage on there. Oh, oh no way! See, that's what I that's mean. Awesome. Yeah, like, dude, David's. It's I'll, I'll have to zoom in and send you guys a, an image. Yeah, of that, I would actually, love to see that. Right, you can read the entire thing, and it's Phelps Garage. I was like, that's so cool. All their, yeah. the, the, the attention to detail they've done, like like you said, like about yeah. her kind of being like going back to this kind of like innocent. Because like, I'll be honest, I'm obviously the, the, one of the biggest Jamie Lee Curtis fans. Um, I thought her acting in kills was not <laughs> fantastic. I just felt like for some reason for me in kills, I felt like everyone for literally forgot how to be an actor. Like I, I blame yeah, COVID for that. That's yeah, it was COVID, COVID 100%. Sure. 100%. <laughs> 100%. No, it was pre, it was, it was pre COVID. Pre COVID. So yeah. Yeah. That was filmed in 2019. Yeah, it was See, I, I think that was, it was so over the top that I thought it was intentionally supposed to be a bit campy. Because like we said, you know, David Gordon Green, these guys are not idiots. They know what good yeah. takes are. Yeah, so yeah. I think there is a part of it, you know, um, where, you know, Anthony and Michael Hall, it's like, you know, Scott, the boogeyman is real. He's alive. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I feel like. Quirky slasher so... type thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's like, a lot of fun. Like yeah. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 style, oh, yeah. which yeah. I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought, you know, honestly, like. I didn't love Evil Dies Tonight. I thought the hospital scene could have been about seven minutes shorter. Um, but, you know, like another thing I didn't love about that was like, I liked his, one of his speeches, but like some of the monologue that he had, and it felt like the Allen kid's dad was going to give a monologue like that when he was playing pool. Like I felt mm, like mm. that kind of Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> like I felt that, yeah. that it was it Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I felt like that yeah. d that kind of dialogue and like monologue was going to come from the dad, and then luckily they kind of shortened it, which I thought was really good. Was, okay, so here's another grandpa by the mother came off. Now I realize your kid's dead, but she came off too forced, angry. Like, dude, stop! Like, clearly this kid wasn't arrested. He didn't actually need to kill or kill the kid. It's like, sorry, you're some had to like, push I, him I off the diving too, board, though. Yeah, but you know what is something just maybe it just seemed too forced, like too like I don't know. It just it just rubbed me the wrong yeah, way. It, where it's like you could you could convey emotion without saying a lot, and she said too much. I thought. Yeah, there was only like you could look at a mother that's lost a kid <laughs> with her by looking at her eyes and tell you she's dead inside, and you don't have to hear her say anything or fuck you. She could have said it's nothing like, almost. This yeah. guy's. And what was, so what was the times on the timeline between that young kid dying into Carl? Three years, uh, right? Three years. Three years, yeah, because that was twenty nine. And then that was the yeah. first time we're supposed to believe that they saw each other out in public. In the small town of Haddonfield. Yeah, I get what you're that's saying. That's what right? that's what I'm just like, right. dude. Yeah, sure. This would have happened the second week at the grocery store or yeah. outside the gas station. Like this is weird. But, but they yeah. had to recreate the Kyle uh, yeah, Richard. Yeah, which I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like that makes sense. Yeah, get her holding <laughs> exactly the holding her back. It's yeah. like the exact <laughs> same shot as that meme. But, totally yeah. the same. I mean, do you think the the love the their their lust for each other in that movie was, came off too quick or too forced? Yeah, it was a little weird. Tom, I, yeah, I, yeah, my, yeah, my, that was one of my gripes: is how fast it happened. 
Right. Like we're talking hours. You know what though? Here's the difference between us. Here's the difference between us guys and a girl's <laughs> point of view on this. Cause like I said, Spencer, before you got on, um, uh, my, uh, really good friend, Carrie Underwood, uh, the singer is a huge, um, is a huge, uh, Halloween fan. Um, like ridiculously big Halloween fan. And so last night she texted me and goes, Hey, I saw you in the diner scene. And I said, just text me when it's over. Cause like, I want to know your, I want to know your thoughts <laughs> on it and all this. And actually I meant to send her the link to this. Cause I thought she was like, why didn't she pop on? I didn't send it to her literally sitting in my outbox on my text. Um, but I brought up that I said, I felt like it might've happened too fast, you know? And then she just goes, listen, I don't remember what young love is like, but I was willing to buy that one. <laughs> Cause like we were going back and forth <laughs> on our gripes and I thought, you know, oh, we're talking okay. about that, but it's now you look at the female point of view of Carrie and she's like, I'm not, she's like, I'm buying the young love thing. She's like, I don't remember what it was like. She's like, but I'm buying the young love thing. And I was like, all right, that's, you know. Uh, yeah, my fair. fiance was all in on it. And she, and she doesn't like horror movies. She hates them. This is her favorite Halloween What a weird movie. house to be she's in She's seen them you. all just by being with me. Yeah. And she was like, oh no, that was, that's like, I get that. Like, she's like all the shit she went through. She's got someone she can like empathize with. Like, and I could see why she's latching on. And I was like, okay, that justifies it for me. Like, I kind of felt that way, but I needed to hear it from someone else. He doesn't and- look like the guy that uses birth control either. So maybe she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was actually a theory. <laughs> That's a head and field story right there. That's a theory. Yeah. I've seen that one floating around that she's mm-hmm. pregnant with, uh, with Corey's well, kid. That, but- maybe that could be the exhale. Maybe that Spencer heard. Possibly there you go. That was a baby breathing. Lamas course or something. A baby. A little little Lamas course. course. So, but Blumhouse has maybe Ben and and Jimmy know this more than me. But Blumhouse is done, right? They they, they only had a three. Yeah, yeah, their deal is up. Yeah, Jason Blum was like kind of, you know, grand saying a little bit, being like, "We don't need Halloween," but I mm, bet if this makes not? a lot of money, it's a great time to like go back and ask for more of mm. a percentage off of Universal's take. You know what I mean? Like. Because pretend you don't need it. Because he's jumping to Exorcist Two now, the, the legit sequel. Correct? Yeah, there, there's a trilogy of those. Like yeah. the yeah, first one's start, guaranteed theatrical. And that's David. And then the second and third one. They yeah, start in a and 30, Christopher Nelson's working on that too. Thirteen days they start. Yeah, Nelson's yeah. on. Yeah. Nelson was actually when Nelson came out to the Anaheim show, he was getting ready for that, and they were originally, you know, they were going to shoot that in, originally in South Africa. They already shot. They shot uh, three weeks of it in Savannah um, earlier this year. Cool. And um, so they got three weeks of it done and originally it was going to go to South Africa and then it was Spain and then it was somewhere in Germany. And now they're back in Atlanta, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, yeah. they're, they're That's w- good. They have some of it done since that comes out <laughs> in like a year, I yeah. think like that's a quick turnaround yeah. for like, they already did three weeks. Exorcist. Of it, I know. Um, yeah. And so oh, another thing I want to bring up too, was like the, how good, and I, I know a lot of us know James, um, um, all of us, um, mm-hmm. I got to say, man, because like I've been obsessed with Halloween since I was a kid, Um, literally since I was a kid. It's been my favorite movie character. It's my favorite movie. It's and I take it so seriously. Um, I really enjoyed him in all three movies. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he killed it. No, like no Literally, issues at all. He's, he was great. Yeah, I think he he's the one that's taken it the the most seriously. You know, it yeah. sort of 100%. reminds me of of like Kane Hodder's mindset with Jason. Yes. Like he, he really Perfect. was very serious about it. And just in speaking with James, as all of you guys have, um, you really feel how important it is for him to to not just throw on the mask and the, and the jumpsuit and walk around and be menacing. Like he really dives it's, deep into what makes the character tick. And uh, to the point where, like, he has talked to me about when he breathes in the character, it's very important for him to breathe it out. Because I feel like the reason he's so good is because if he if he didn't turn it off, he actually might kill someone. You're exactly, cool. you're actually exactly right. And we have a, <laughs> we have a story, me and John actually have a story about that. So, and I've been on the set of other Halloweens where it, that really bothered me because... I was hanging out and I would see somebody take the mask off or like goof around and dance around with the mask on. And I was like, you know, of course I'm very thankful to be where I am. And I'm on the set of these movies and I've been on the, I was on the set of some of Rob's movies and, um, you know, to be on the set of a Halloween movie and see a, a person not take that character seriously, like kind of bums me out secretly. I'm obviously wasn't going to say that out loud, but so, um, Tyler made. James, yeah, Tyler was one of those people, but I like Tyler, but, he didn't mm-hmm. take it as seriously as James did, obviously. Um, James came out to a show in South Carolina. 
Uh, it was the first time John had met him too. And I, I have masks on the side of the stage and always have literally for the, my 20 years in China down, there's been how Michael Myers masks on the side of the stage. Um, and I told my tech at the time, I go, man, I go, it would be really cool. Like if, if friends come out, like if any friends come out, like it'd be, uh, let them do a guitar change. Like if Ben comes out, like, Oh, let him bring out a guitar on stage and like do the guitar change. And I was like, man, it'd be really cool if, if James would put on one of those masks and like come out <laughs> like, and then during the show, obviously it didn't happen. And after the show, I'm talking with him about it. And this is right. I don't even know if 18 had come out, but they had filmed it. Um, and he goes, uh, he, what to, to kind of what you said, Spencer, like he goes, I can't, I can't do it. And I was like, as bummed as I was, so I would love to have him walk out on stage and that I respected him so much in that moment that he was like, I can't do it. He's like, I have to go to this place to put that mask on. He'd kill you. <laughs> that, yeah. And that's why he doesn't, you know, James does a lot of conventions, but if you notice, he doesn't do, the in costume photo ops. Yeah. yeah it's, just, it's, it's for that exact reason. And I, I mean, obviously it means that much him because he's leaving a lot of money on the table because the in costume photo ops is like, that's, really, that's really, the, really popular, that's the convention. Like that's the convention top dollar. Golden goose. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's exactly why he won't do it. I love that. Though. I feel like that would cheapen a little bit too. Like, Oh yeah. I, I like if, if, he's in the costume it's in these movies or for like promo or whatever. And then it exists in the everyone, movies. Yeah. For everyone. And you can appreciate it as a character. Yeah, I don't go to a ton of conventions. I just met him at a convention. And I, I noticed that too. I was like, Oh, he's just like a guy. Like he's just chilling here. He's like the nicest guy ever. I talked to him for a little bit and I had never met him before, but I was like, obviously like super excited. And I was like, man, it's kind of cool that, he's James Jude Courtney here. But then when he's on screen, he's like literally Michael Myers and I can see them as different people, which is awesome. Cause you don't get that with pretty much any, anyone else who's worn the mask. Like Zach was saying like, it kind of starts. I, I've kinda, never really had the urge to go meet them. It kind of starts once he puts the makeup on too. Cause being in the trailer, you know, I was in the trailer several days where he walked in as himself. And then by the end of it had the burnt neck on and the hand and did it all. And I remember on the set of kills, I was like, we have to get a full, I have to get a full photo. Like I have to, because like, this is like obviously my dream and it didn't happen because he, he, you know, he, again, he had to be in this mental headspace to do it, but I will, I did get one on ends. Cause I basically was like, you're not fucking getting out of this. Like we're doing this. And like, but he was, he was about to shoot a sewer scene. So I already kind of felt vulnerable. And he like, he put the mask on and we we're in the trailer and we took the photo to this day, the coolest photo I've ever taken in my life. Probably. Um, it's the one I posted when the movie came out. But um, I will say like for me, again, being like a lifetime fan of this movie and like, again, used to have terrible night terrors about Michael Myers, like legit thought I was being chased, would wake up in the middle of the night, run down the stairs, like wild shit. Right. Um, during kills, right. The day that he was going to kill, spoiler alert, uh, the day that he was going to kill Allison, not Allison. What's the Karen, the day he was going to kill Karen. Yep. Um, He's in the his old bedroom up there, and I had to leave. I was on the set for a bunch of days, but I had to leave kind of in the middle of this one shooting day. My flight was at like four o'clock or whatever, and this is like two thirty in the afternoon. And if you don't, if, if anybody doesn't know, they built uh, Lampkin Lane in in a warehouse on Kills. Literally everything you see, all the outside shots on Lampkin Lane were inside. They just it was amazing actually to see. But wow. so we're inside this warehouse and he goes up, I give him a hug, tell him bye. I'm leaving. Tell Chris, bye. Tell David, bye. And, uh, he goes up to this window and I, I know he told me later that he did it for me. And like, in a way it was very beautiful in a way it was fucking terrifying, but he, he put the mask on and he literally just stared out the window at me for like a minute and a half. <laughs> and it was fucking mortifying like even though like again i think it's because i am so attached to this character and always have been but like you know i know the guy the guy spent the night at my house who's in this mask i know him we're really really close friends there was something about him putting that mask on and staring down at me where i was like this is fucking terrifying terrifying <laughs> That's why awesome. you know it's funny. I was on uh well, I was on Kill Set too. Yeah, right when I know, right when I got there is like right when you left. 
Yeah. So James wasn't there the two nights I was there, but I was, we were setting up around the video village. Like, well, you need a seat. James isn't here to sit in his. And they open up the shape seat. And I'm like, what? Okay. So <laughs> That's I got to awesome. see his seat. Yeah. And, and I was there the first night Jamie was back, which was pretty cool. So I got to see her come up in the truck, whatever. But yeah, I wish he was on. I, that's the only thing I wish he was on set. And I got to see, see I never got it. all the days I was I'll on both there. movies. I never got to see Jamie. Oh, always oh, got that. You know, yeah, she they, came right up to me. She it was, yeah, it was a while. That's amazing. I, well, Jamie actually lured your front rank stuff on like publicity and stuff on red carpets, which is badass. Yeah, that story you told yeah, the yeah, other she, day was great when I saw you. Oh, she hits me up. Like, she literally, like, <laughs> we That's gave her sick. some lunch boxes. She wanted some for her charity. So, Ryan uh, Turk, she, he's like, Well, I'm going to send you guys up an email. I'm like, Wait a minute. What are you talking about? He's like, Jamie, okay. I'm just going to, I'm like, Lee Curtis? <laughs> he's like, Yeah. So, when Halloween Kills Lloyd? came out last year, Came out. Yeah, I was like, uh, should I? I'm gonna send her some shirts, whatever. And, and Ryan's like, well, just email her. I'm like, should I just email her out of the blue? And he's like, yeah, go for it. And she's like, oh, yeah, it'd be great. And we were talking back and forth in email. And then she like sent me the picture of her and Demi Moore and Melanie Griffith and Paris Jackson all in the Halloween, you know, kills shirts. Because I'm gonna post this tonight. I'm like, okay, that's amazing. That's right. You Holy didn't have shit, any of them ready of though, things. right? No, well, the Halloween ends. We didn't. You're right. So she's like, hey, I'm going to be at Universal Horror Nights next week. Can I get some of the Halloween end shirts? And we hadn't printed any of them yet. And I'm like, yes. So I like literally was like, all right, call up my buddy. I'm like, we got to print these now. And we got them done the next day, overnighted them to her. And then I didn't know what day it was going to be, whatever. And I'm sitting here watching the movie and people are texting me. I'm like, what's going on? She's live on TikTok in our shirt. I'm like, Oh, there's Jamie. Okay. That's so That's, awesome. That'll That's do so, it for the business. Like, to work on something like that and have like, I don't know. I can't even imagine that. That's crazy. That'd Shoot, be so cool. It, it, it's, it's so wild. Like I got to speak with her on the set of kills, but she didn't, we, it wasn't like we entered, like I introduced myself. It was just weird. She walked right up to me. She had her hand on her stomach cause she was in makeup. Like she was yeah. in makeup bleeding and everything. I'm like, do you need a band aid? I was just joking around with her, but we talked for a few minutes, but she didn't really know me or anything. We were just talking, but now it's like, it's crazy. Like I can just, she writes back in like five minutes, half the time too. You write her an email and she's like, yep, but whatever, you know, that's it's, awesome. I you, met her once. Friend. I didn't meet her on the set. Both times I was on the set, you know, she comes in obviously early, gets all of her stuff done and then is out. Um, but I've met her once before and she was incredibly nice. And everyone on the set, including Chris Nelson was like, she, she, you honestly couldn't work with a better person. Like everyone was really, everyone was very complimentary of her. And you mentioned it too, Zach, like when I was on set and kills, like, and again, it's not like I'm walking around movie sets every day, but like, the people on that set cast and crew are the most genuine people I've ever been around. Like it was, um, the girl who played the doctor, uh, I forgot her name, but the one who was dressed up as the doctor who gets killed in the see, it was her last day. Oh on yeah. Set. Yeah. The, uh, the, and, have the, the, the couple with the kid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was her last day on set and they got a cake. She was crying. Everyone was singing. Um, they were all like, we all went to dinner together for the, you know, in the craft services. It was like this big kind of warehouse down the street. We all ate and, and sat and ate together, like casting crew, everybody. No, they, um, they treat everybody just great. Like, even the most, even the most minimal yeah. character. Like you feel like your family. I mean, even Anthony Michael Hall came up, he goes, Hey man, Mike Hall. And I'm evil like, dies tonight, Mike? Ben. Yeah. <laughs> evil dies tonight, Ben. It, it was so wild. Like it was, it, you felt like, I mean, again, obviously as a big fan, I was already in awe. And, and yeah. like you said, like I was, like, I don't even want to move because if I don't want to screw anything up and David came up to me and we we're talking, he was wearing our Halloween jacket and stuff. And we got, and it was like, this is wild. Everyone is so cool. It, I just didn't want to leave. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. Even I think it outside, feels like I'm oh, sorry. First, uh -oh. uh, uh, it feels like the first time it's been made. I don't know what's going on. I think the oh. I think the uh, I think the ghost face guy cut there your you go. back there. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now yeah, we yeah. got you. Uh, I, I was just saying that it feels like this film has this these this trilogy of of movies has come out far enough after the first one has come out in '78, where everyone who is probably involved. Was it was a kid when when the first one came out? So there's this feeling that everyone who's involved from top to bottom on this production is such a real fan yeah. of these characters. I think that that shows in what what you were saying, Ben, about how gracious everyone is. 
Yeah. There was a core I mean, group it, of people too that got the wild. tattoo. They got the uh that got Michael Meyer. I know Turk got it, Chris Nelson got it. Yep. A couple other people got it. So you know it was funny. I was sitting there, we were sitting in the chairs and Annie Manichek was next to me and she was about to go do one of her scenes and a phone goes off and it was the Halloween theme. She goes, Oh, that's my phone. I better turn that off. And I was like, That's your theme? <laughs> like I that, love that's that. your that's your ringtone. That's amazing. Like it was, and she's know, awesome cool. too. She was so cool to me when I was on set, and her her stunt double too uh, was is great. Mm. Um, which I saw her stunt double uh, on the set, and I was hanging out with her um, during the set of ends or on the set of ends, and then I realized like after once I watched the movie, I'm like, what was she doing there? Right. <laughs> She broke the arm, yeah. maybe. Who knows? I was like, there's no need for any, like, I, I, like, because, like, you know, I, was, I remember, uh, I think Lydia is her name, and I was talking to her on the set of of Ends, and I was like, okay, I, you know, and then, but then once I, once I watched the movie, I'm like, what? There was no stunts for her. Maybe jumping off the roof, or maybe they filmed them and cut them. I don't know. Oh, maybe. but yeah, I I met her at the 2018 Salem Horror Fest premiere. And I was like, hey, like you did a great job. And she's like, oh, you're the YouTube guy. Like you make video, you made all those videos about this movie. And I was like, uh, it felt like like weird. Like I was like being seen. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. She's like, I love them. That thanks a lot. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> like you're the one in the movie. Like right. that's crazy. And yeah, yeah every, everyone I've talked to, like James Drew Courtney, uh, Christopher Nelson, like was so cool because I had never I interacted with him a little bit when kills was coming out and he was like really cool, but it was over text, you know? Yeah. And then when I met him at uh, midsummer scream, he was going to do an interview on my channel. And then we ended up just talking for like an hour after that, just to, like everything we were talking about. He was so cool. He was telling me all this stuff about like making each individual effect I was asking about. And he's like kept up with me after. So yeah, everyone I've talked to so, yeah. like, from the outside, you never know with the YouTube stuff. James and Chris always come everyone's to been shows, cool. And uh, I talk to Rowan all the time too. Um, Rowan was going to try to jump on here, but he's on set. I'm imagining he's doing Hardy Boys right now. But um, nice. no, man, I all those people are so cool and so nice. And it was it was honestly, again, for me, it's like you know, we barely talked about the fact that I was even in it. But like it was it was it was the the greatest thing ever other than having to shave my face, which made me very upset. Um, I wish you were killed in it, though. That would have really that was remember that was the original. So that was the, uh, so you guys don't know this, but John knows it. When I got the original call. Um, you were gonna be shot, right? I got an email. Well, I was gonna get killed. Yeah, I was originally. I think the very first thing I was gonna be was the kid in the jeep on the passenger side when they yep. when they're showing the the things, all the things that went wrong. Yeah, in the yeah, town. Yeah. Um, after the oh, that after cool. the kid dies, Spencer. Um, when they're showing like the lady hung hung herself and the two, and he's like, "Oh, Michael Myers doesn't use guns." Like originally. I think I was going to be the kid in the passenger seat, but the, the script said teen found dead in car, but I, I don't think I'm passing as a teen anymore. <laughs> Spencer, maybe. Yeah, that was Oscar's <laughs> mom and, and who hung herself. Oh, that was Oscar's mom. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. She's wearing his like devil horns and the cape. Oh, I didn't even notice oh, that. Shit. Yeah. Oh, hey. oh wow. 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 I, I knew no I had no idea. It's, I saw it like the second time. I was like, Oh shit! Like that makes more sense. Yeah. Like I wasn't really lady. sad. Like she hung herself. I wasn't yeah. passing for. So uh, I wasn't passing for teen in a car. Spencer could pass for teen in a car. I could not pass for a teenager found. <laughs> well, I shave. I shave more consistently than you do. Right? Right. I don't. I don't shave <laughs> right. at all, Spencer. And that's what. So I show up. I show up on. The, yeah, you seem really bothered by that. <laughs> you, was, you bring I, it up a lot. I, I showed up and uh and they go. I got I got in a wardrobe and they're like because I didn't really know much originally because. As soon as David asked me about it and James hit me up and goes, you're in it. And then casting called me. Because again, like David said, we want to put you in the next one. James said it. Chris said it. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, like, honestly, like I was, I did. It was to me in my head, no matter, even, even if David said it, it was 0.1% chance. And then David, I get a text from him and then I get a call, from, <laughs> I get a call from casting and they're like, hey, we need you to show up these days. And I'm like, yeah, whatever the fuck ever. I'll be, whatever. I'll be there. I'll cancel a fucking show. I don't like, I'm, I'll be there. So I show up and they like get me in wardrobe and I, I sit down in the hair chair and they're like, Oh, we got to shave. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They're like, yeah, all the extras have to shave. I was like, I think I'm like a special guest. And I like texted everybody over on set and they're like, yeah, you're a special guest. You shouldn't have to shave. So then turret comes, turret, turret comes over. And it's like, you got to shave. I'm like, <laughs> you got and I had awesome. like a Mohawk too. <laughs> That's the price you pay. I had a mohawk. Yeah. So I show up on set and David comes up to me. I talk, start talking to David and he's like, he goes, we got to cut your hair. And I go, dude, 
I got a photo shoot in three weeks for our record. I was like, you've already shaved my face. Like, can we not? And he's like, he comes over to me. He's like, hold on. Let me, he's like, let me talk to Attila. And he goes back and he comes back and he goes, you get to be in a Halloween movie. <laughs> I was like, that mean I have to cut my hair. And he's like, yeah, you got to cut your hair. I was like, shit. <laughs> So they oh, cut my hair and shaved my face, which is. Which but why? Was, I don't get for that seed. Why did they have to? Like you couldn't blend it in with the rest of those assholes. David hates facial hair. If you watch uh, any of his shows, if you watch any of his shows, that is interesting. Huh. He doesn't have a lot. There's not a lot of facial, and also I was a cop, so I could either have a mustache or no facial hair. Was that was the deal? You were a cop in that? And, yeah. Yeah, they're all cop buddies yeah. sitting around. Yeah. The, so okay, so here's my thing, my gripe then. Oh God! If you guys are all sitting there as cops, you would let your buddy go by himself under some fucking storm drain. The gang of cops all get he left. By Michael. That, yeah, he left that would have been badass because he's already killed firemen. Let's kill yeah. a whole group of cops. Let's kill some paramedics. Looking back on it, I don't know why he can get local also, government. There's a weird editing spot in there because actually, I'm not Joe Grillo. I'm actually Joe Russo. But he says Joe Grillo's birthday, and I turn around because the original dialogue is he says that I made Joe Russo like a vegan cake for his birthday. They kind of switched it because when I turn around, it looks like I'm Joe Grillo and it's my birthday. Yeah. Which is very strange, but. Well, you look like a dick in that. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very <laughs> great aware of that. Great actor. <laughs> yeah, I'm great very actor. Good. I'm very aware of that. All right. Well, let, before we hop off here, let's do what we all know the answer to. Um, let's go around and just do, uh, let's do uh, in order your favorite three of the last three. I think I know the answer to, other than Spencer, I think I'm going to know the answer to all of these. Uh, John, uh, rank them for me in the last three oh, movies. God. Seriously, rank them? Uh, yes, seriously. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't mind the order they're in right now, but the, the, fr- uh, I would go, uh, Ed's 2018 kills. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I, I just, cause I, cause I think, I think the reason why I love this movie so much again, like I said, I just fell in love with the way James portrayed him. And I just, I just liked this a different movie. Yeah, I agree. That's a, I, I wasn't expecting that Ben. I would say 2018 ends and then kills. Yeah. I think, I think Jimmy, you said it like, I think you can watch the original in 2018 and call it a day. Yeah. I think those are perfect two movies, but I like what they were doing with ends. The acting was way better. I, I like the story and then kills is so rewatchable, but I do think some of the things fall apart in it. That makes it, which, my least which favorite. movie do you think Ben had the best soundtrack? Uh, see, it's hard because I'm trying to now listen back to ends, and I think Jimmy, God, you mentioned ends is so some, good, and, 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 and that are, really is 18, good. Dude. Yeah, ends is the best I think. Shape, but shape, eighteen, I've listened to the most, so now I got to go back. But I don't know, ends is really shape good. stocks. Yeah, Allison. I kind of skip over kills. Shape, yeah. Oh, shape stocks. Allison, that was our like, intro. That's the best track. You mentioned that's the that's best. That's the one that period. starts when yeah. Oscar when they show Oscar hanging on the thing, right? When you hear the yeah, yeah. that was our intro to Devil. That's so the best track. Good. That was our live intro to so Devil good. for like a couple years that's cool that was our like inter- so that was our interlude uh live all right jimmy i'm sure think you're probably on along the lines of ben but i'd like to hear what you think so yeah exact same ranking as ben uh basically for the same reasons but yeah i, I think i'm gonna revisit ends about as much if not more than i did with 2018 yeah. like i watched 2018 all the time throughout the year kills is like a is a halloween rotation for me where i feel like if i keep watching it i will get sick of it so if i keep it like an annual watch you know on halloween night it'll be good but yeah it's, it's definitely a 2018 ends kills and i could dude i could see ends like matching 2018 i, I I'm really with you, love man. this movie i'm with you mm-hmm. spence uh i'm gonna be in the minority i know you were to me i'm going kills ends 2018 Wow. I'm a fan of that 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 campy wow. slasher vibe. And to me, Kills is like the most rewatchable. Even the elements that some people don't like, like I find them to be funny. So I But put it 2018 third, huh? The, not at a slight to it, because I really like Kills and and N. So it's not like it's not like they're you know bottom ten, you know, at the end of a, a list of ten. But uh, yeah, that's just how I, I would go about it in terms of like rewatchability. Yeah, we don't need to rank all of them. I did a I did a three hour podcast with all Nelson. 13. I did a three hour podcast with Nelson and Sean, and uh, on the thing with two heads podcast, and I got 
so many hateful DMs about my about my ranking system. People, Welcome to my life. Oh, man. dude, I can't imagine the shit you have to go through with that. Like, because even like the stuff I've been seeing about the movie, I'm just like, I don't understand all the flack it's getting. Like, I I really liked it. Like, yeah, it's crazy. I, I really liked it. I thought, and they're like, oh, Michael went out with like a punk. I'm like, Michael's almost seventy fucking years old. <laughs> you know, like, um, come on. My whole thing with 2018, and I really do enjoy it, but I just feel like it still messes with the end of the first one too much because I just want to believe that he wasn't apprehended later yeah. in the night. Yeah. I either want to believe he disappeared for 20 years, like, you know, leading up to H2O or um, or not. Yeah. I yeah, I think it. it's good they didn't show it. I think that would have made it worse if they showed it in 2018 like really spelled it out how they wanted to like i'm glad they saved it for kills instead of having it there because that would have felt like corny i think having it in 2018 yeah and the thing about kills too man is like being there and seeing that like when they did like the the uh the throwback stuff like dude that was yeah i mean that's one of the coolest that's the first thing i saw someone showed me that in salem like i was on the street it was like a fan of my channel like came up to me it was like hey man i love your channel love all of his do you want to see the set they're using for the myers house and kills and i'm like yeah i guess and so he just shows me on his phone and it's the whole lampkin lane and i saw them filming the flashback and i'm like that's cool as shit he's like you want me to send it to you i'm like yeah sure so i just sat on that for like a year and then the same thing happened with ends where someone sent me a picture of the mask from the set like super early so i just had to sit on it for like a year. It was crazy. Dude, the amount, so I have with both movies. The amount of people who, cause like I was on set and did a bunch of like behind the scenes photos of like on, on uh, kills and on ends, the amount of people. Cause remember I posted that photo um, uh, of me, James and Chris, and it was James's face all made up, but with no mask. I didn't realize the amount of like screen rant, all these like uh, Fangoria, all yeah. these places posted this. Photo. I was just like, oh, I'm just you know, behind the scenes stuff. Everyone posted this photo. And then I started getting texts like, I got a video out of it. Oh, so. yeah. Great. That was good. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Did you get in trouble for that? No, Did I didn't get I didn't, No, I didn't yeah. get in any trouble at all. The only thing that Chris asks me not to do and I and I won't do. Um, and that's what I was about to get to is the amount of DMs I get from dudes being like, you will send me pic- close up color picture of mask. I'm like, no, I won't. <laughs> like, like the amount, I mean, this is no joke. Since I posted the, the photos the other day, <clears throat> 40 DMs probably of people asking me for, like, dude, I know you took that picture in color. T- send me it in color. I'm like, actually, I took it on a Leica because that, that's, the, that's the camera that I use all the time is my Leica and I always shoot in black and white. So I was like, actually, that, that picture is, was processed in black and white. I don't have a color version of it. Now, uh, did I take lots of close up pictures of the mask with a very high quality camera and color? Of course I did. Um, but I'm saving those for Chris. And, you know, I told him I'd send them to him when he wants them. And I'm like, I'm not going to put like the amount of people who have asked me to send me color photos of them, like send them color photos of the mask. And like, I'll give you whatever amount of money. And the people like asking for my masks, like it's wild to me. Like, how much money these people are willing to spend on like masks. <laughs> yeah. Even for rehauls, like those things cost so much money, dude. And I mean, I just did my own. I was like, I'm not. Yeah. Not I love that you did 600 your own. bucks. I thought, on a fucking I thought mask. that was really cool. Speaking of like the mask stuff, Spencer, you just launched your own uh, convention too, right? Recently. Yeah. Silver scream con. Yeah. Which was badass. super cool, man. Cool. Like I, the fact that someone in a band did that and like, you're obviously known for this horror stuff that you do, but to like branch out and do something like that. Like we talked, I think I, the band was talking about it, like how cool that was that you did that. Thanks man. Yeah. I was just in awe of, you know, like being uh, at the convention and watching some of the panels, like having James, you Courtney and Nick Castle on one panel it's just like, wow, I can't believe these guys are in this room just because of, of me putting on this convention. Like it was, it was a trip and 
uh, we hope to do it every year. You guys got to come out. Dude, I'm in. You know what? I actually talked to um, our friend Tina, uh, who does a lot of stuff yep. for conventions. and oh, She's the best. Yeah. She goes, she goes, listen, she goes, you got to, she's like, you got to do a convention. She's like, Spencer just did one. I go, yeah. I go, but Spencer's like in that world. Like I'm not known as like a horror guy. Yeah. Like you got to be a fan of You're me You're in already. the new movie. That's true. And that's what I told her. I go, you know what? Listen, I go. Once the movie comes out, I said, I'll do one. But I, I said, my banner has to say Zach Myers from Halloween ends. Yeah, but you got to be, you got to do in character photos too. Shave yourself. Get that yeah, little, yeah, 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 yeah. In a cop uniform. I'll be, uh, I'll be a, a on duty. Uh, that'd be great. I'll, I'll do it. I'll tell you what, man, if we're not busy next year, I will, I will be coming to yours for sure. I don't, Let's do a, we'll do a shine down acoustic set. We'll, we're going to do a show again for me it. and Brent. Me and Brent cool. will maybe do a Smith and Myers thing. That would be cool. Fuck. That would be badass. Yeah, man. Well, dude, cool. thank you guys for being on here today. I thought this was really cool. It's kind of our we're kind of on a season break right now, but I figured we would break up our off season on this podcast by doing a roundtable. And I couldn't think of any better people to have. This was uh, super fun, and we've lost Ben again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> No. But no, uh, thanks to Ben from Fright Rags. Thanks, Jimmy Champagne. If you don't know Jimmy Champagne's um, YouTube channel, it's just under his name, and I love it. It's one of my favorite horror channels. It actually probably is my favorite horror channel because well, I think I just followed it. I, I think you do a. It. I think you do. Thank a, you. Thank you. You do you. a very non. You do a very non biased, very non annoying. Um, a lot of them just are fucking annoying. Honestly, like you know. Yeah. It's. I feel like yours is. I got a few channels. I love I the horror break. community as a whole, but I think so many people, not so many, but enough of them, a small niche that are so entitled to their bullshit that it becomes like, yeah, like I, don't, toxic. I don't like the negativity. I don't like the negativity focus. That's a myth that you have to be negative to get big on YouTube. It's just not real. Oh, no, no, dude, just be, and yeah, just fuck, man. I lo- people I respond it. to being genuine more. I get less subs than a lot of the other people do, but. I think people who subscribe to my stuff come back more, which I, I do. Appreciate. Like I said, the first time I saw a video for 18, I was like, I was, I was subscribed and I love it. Um, uh, Spencer, ladies and gentlemen from Einstein kills the, of course, um, by the way, very proud of you and, and all the things that your band's doing. You guys are growing, uh, exponentially, which I love. And, uh, I love that you went out with and opened for fucking Metallica, which is one of the, the coolest things you can ever do. Yeah, so cool. I'm pissed because we, you, we just got, we were down. We were close. UK. I, I was pissed because I just fucking missed your set. I went, Uh-oh. I went, so I can't, I pulled up right when they were ending. Cause we got there late. Yeah. Cause uh, me and him hung out that yeah. day for a little bit, but yeah. Well, thank you for having me, Zach. It's, it's always a pleasure speaking with you and, uh, I love you guys. Thank Thanks you guys for having much. me be a part of this. Yeah, man. And uh, I know we're on a mid-season break. But the next time you see us, Paul will be back. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and uh, like it and do all the things that YouTube people say. What do you guys say, Jimmy? What's you guys' what you guys Just slant? tell people to watch the whole thing. Yeah, That's watch, what matters. Watch the whole yes. thing. How much they Time. watch. Watch this Time. whole yeah. two-hour yeah. podcast about us fucking nerds talking about our one of our favorite movies. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for tuning in um, and we'll see you very soon. Once again, thanks to Ben from Fright Rags. Go to FrightRags.com for uh, the best horror merch in the world if you didn't know that already. Um, and thank you guys for being here. Yes. John, as well, go fuck yourself. Uh, and um, we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Next weekend. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Bye. y'all. Happy Halloween. Yeah. <laughs>